Hello and welcome to the 2012 update on wills and estate planning. My name is Kenneth Furkamen and we're the host of the New Jersey legal podcast, the NJ Laws 2. Um, number one, um, in 2011, the federal estate tax was increased um, for estates to be $5 million. Actually, the prior year was unlimited. Before that, it was it was less. So how does that affect people, let's say, in the state of New Jersey? I'd say, well, in 2012, the amount that someone can leave without any federal state and gift tax is $5,120,000. So many individuals in New Jersey said, we don't have to worry about taxes. Well, that's not necessarily true because the New Jersey uh, estate tax uh, taxes everything over $675,000. So... I'd say um, there is a high estate tax in New Jersey that uh, unless someone's giving their assets to charities, uh, they still have to pay taxes. So, for example, uh, some person's unmarried or widowed and they have an estate of $1 million, I'd say uh, there's no federal estate tax, but an estimated New Jersey estate tax is um, $33,000. For an unmarried uh, or widowed person, I'd say uh, these with assets of $1.5 million, they'd be paying in ballpark of about over $60,000. So how can someone avoid that? Well, unfortunately, give give away your assets is one of the main, main ways people do that. Number two, uh, when the new probate law took effect, they recognized where individuals could um, have a writing that could possibly be deemed to be a will. Uh, so Senate Law 708 made substantial changes in the probate law in New Jersey. I'd say the law expanded situations where writings that were intended by someone as a will would be allowed, but puts the burden of proof on the proponent by clear and convincing evidence. So possibly a Christmas card with handwritten notes could be presented as a will or codicil. So I'd say to present, though, a non-formal will or Writing requires an ex expensive complaint in order to show cause to be filed with the Superior Court and be heard in front of a hearing or trial in front of a Superior Court judge. So we usually say be careful, have a will done by an experienced attorney, and uh, someone shouldn't just try to save money by writing something on uh, online paper. Uh, number three, we recommend what's called self-proving wills. Under a prior law, it simply required two witnesses. However, one of the witnesses had to appear in front of the, uh, the surrogate and sign paperwork to indicate that they were the, they were the witness. And the witness could uh, you know, try to charge a very high fee. So the New Jersey legislature some years ago passed um, what we call the self-proving will law, where a person signs, two witnesses sign, then the attorney or notary signs. Let's see. And there has to be certain uh, statutory language to make sure the w that says the will is self-proving. So when done properly, the executor does not have to locate any of the witnesses. This usually saves time and money. I'd say uh, but you, if your will is not self-proving or you're unsure, schedule an appointment with an uh, um, elder law attorney. Some law offices like uh, um, still ignore the old law and don't properly prepare self-proving will. So uh, make sure that your will self is self-proving and you'll have less to worry about. Um, beware of the elected share rights of a new spouse. So if someone's considering a, a second or third marriage, have a prenuptial agreement. The elective share pro, uh, provisions under the probate law were not changed yet. There was proposals to it, but they weren't changed. So currently, a spouse who is not given money in a will can challenge the terms of the will. That's called electing against the will by, by a spouse. So a spouse could receive up to one-third of what's called the um, augmented estate. They could receive one-third of the estate if, even if only married for two weeks. The spouse must file a caveat or lawsuit in the Superior Court. So if someone's considering a, a second or third marriage, we suggest a formal prenuptial agreement that requires a writing, requires uh, legal representation by both sides and then signed again after the uh, people are are married 
and that way uh, you know they can protect their children's rights. Uh, recent law uh, basically eliminates palimony. I'd say uh, um, the law in New Jersey there was a statute um, signed by the governor, um, voted on by our legislatures to basically overrule two whole two uh, Supreme Court cases that uh, had palimony between unmarried cohabitants even where someone had died. I'd say, uh, and the law provides that um, no uh, no promise is uh, binding unless it's in writing and unless it was made with independent advice of counsel on both sides. So that's a good law. I'd say palimony is, is, uh, is bad. Uh, number five, um, the Supreme Court had a decision a few years ago where a will could be void if signed under suspicious circumstances. And he looked at where there was a confidential relationship coupled with suspicious circumstances, undue influence is presumed, and the burden of proof shifts to the will proponent to overcome the presumption. If there is undue influence in making of a will and transferred by the deed in a confidential relationship, there could even be punitive damages and attorney's fees. And that was the uh, estate of Stockdale case. Now, dealing with um, gifts, I'd say federal law permits gifts to be made without any federal gift tax of up to $3,000 per person to as many people as someone wants. However, the amount permitted for the purpose of Medicaid is zero. So people can't make gifts to be eligible for Medicaid, but they can to reduce the amount of gift tax. Now, in New Jersey, New Jersey, in addition to an estate tax, has an inheritance tax. And although there's no inheritance tax if monies are going to children or to grandchildren or spouse, there are still returns to be filed to get tax waivers. And the New Jersey Inheritance Tax Return Instructions and New Jersey Estate Tax Forms and their instructions were revised in September of 2011. So we've told people to throw out the old forms. And lastly, powers of attorney. Don't use a form purchased online unless it contains reference to a New Jersey statute requiring banks to honor the power of attorney. And that's Section 2 of PL 1991, Chapter 95, also under the statute as uh, NJSA 46-2B-11. That's it. Um, there's other... Um, now, New Jersey is a probate-friendly state, and that means that... I'd say uh, there's not substantial work that has to go in emitting a will to probate, but it's still important to do planning ahead of time. And one of the, the last topics we'll cover on planning ahead of time is um, updating a living will and power of attorney to make sure it has reference to the uh, federal HIPAA law. Um, there's a federal regulation known as the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, HIPAA, H-I-P-A-A. And that was adopted really dealing with disclosure of uh, information, health information. But what it really does is if um, it prevents doctors from providing information to anyone other than the patient. And that makes it difficult if someone is a family member that provided um, assistance and provides cares. So uh, we suggest any previously executed powers of attorney, living wills, uh, trusts, certain medical uh, directors should have... Uh, uh, reference to the HIPAA law. For other information, visit website njlaws.com, that's njlaws.com, or contact the law office of Kenneth Rickhamon in 2053 Warbridge Avenue, Edison, New Jersey, 732-572-0500. Thank you, and have a great year.